Okay, good evening everybody. So we are almost at the end of this course. A few more classes, okay? Just two more topics, two or three more topics. Okay, so before we start our tonight's class, just I want to give you just a reminder about the test three day after tomorrow, right? In our next class. So did you get uh, the study guide? Okay, okay, that's good. So, yeah, so although some uh, students are taking C sharp and some students are taking Java class, so by, by you need to understand what is the difference between call by value and call by reference. I discuss with program with call by value and call by reference, right? So, so remember those lectures, and if needed, go back to that video, lecture video. I have put all of the videos and so even if you are taking like call by reference, Java always works for call by value and C sharp always works, C sharp works call by value and both call by reference, okay. In order to use call by reference, we use ref keyword. What call by reference uh, does, call by reference that I gave you a, a silly example that your ho your guest can change your your own property. The call by reference that does something like this. Or well, if you call a method by call by reference, that method can change the caller method's value, some variables value. That is the main concept, okay? In order to do that in C sharp, we use uh, the race keyword. Okay? Look at the slides, please. Okay, and there will be some recursion, recursion process that I discussed in last class. Okay, and for the link list, you need to learn like four things. Append pprint methods and first by, let us do understand ID, first by ID with one value. If you understand with one value, we can do it another, okay? First by ID, first and delete. Append, prepend, search, and delete. Okay. Really, these are difficult. So do some practice and then. And for stack, push, and pop operation. So pick is very easy. Pick operation just it picks the la the top element, top node, but it does not delete the top node. Okay. And for the QE, NQ and DQ operation. You must get these questions in your test, okay? Append, prepend, searching, deleting, push, pop, and in Q and DQ. Okay, 50% question is out. Your test question, okay? Do some practice. <coughs> Okay, tonight we will uh, start a uh, really difficult task. Difficult means it is interesting. It seems to be interesting, but really it's difficult. Difficult in terms of time. Because I'm assigned one week to cover multi-trading and parallel processing. But uh, in my next class, I have my test, right? So I don't know how much I can cover for trace and parallel processing. These are really interesting things. I wish I could teach two, three weeks for this. We could be master of this, multi-trading and then uh, in parallel processing. Actually, what is a thread? A thread is a runnable uh, path, execution path of a program. Okay. Java is a multi-threaded operating system, like maybe also C sharp, maybe as well. But I'm, I'm uh, not a C sharp, C sharp expert. So in Java, we know we know that Java every Java program has the main main method, right? 
all Java programs must have a not all Java. So the the uh, Java program so far we have seen and worked with that is a single threaded program. Okay, that has the main method and main thread is the main thread. So there is the driver thread or principal thread that runs or uh, the that uh, starts the program. Java is a multi-threaded uh, program. So what is a thread? A thread is, is an execution path of a program, line of a program. Okay. So Java in most of the programs written in not only programs and applications and also games are written as multi-threaded application and you everybody is here is familiar with multi-threaded applications like all of our operating systems current operating systems are multi-threaded multi-threaded means you can uh, execute multiple thread words multiple programs simultaneously like right? for instance while working on your program on your computer you can watch a movie you can listen to music you can run a program right you can print parallelly you can type in you can execute your own program right so multiple programs you can run on your computer so that operating systems have multiple threads and multiple threads run parallelly. So actually, op uh, <coughs> parallel processing uh, is related to threads, parallel threads. So this is why we start, uh, we'll start from multi-threading and then we will go to parallel processing. But in tonight's class, I cannot complete uh, those steps. Process. This, this concept is said that my basic concept of multi threading uh, systems, the multi threaded operating system delivers the potential power by running multiple threads concurrently within a single program and in order to run yes single program is the main uh, <coughs> concept here and in order to run your multiple thread you must need one is, is called main thread and you can create multiple threads and you can parallelly run uh, multiple threads is or in, in some uh, text it says it's called the worker thread. In worker worker thread is is called the main thread. In some uh, text is called worker thread. That can be used to perform time consuming or time critical tasks without trying to use primary thread or that is called. In modern not only computer, in modern computers and even our cell phones and then more modern electronic devices have multiple processors. You know, so we say coprocessor, we use coprocessor. So multiple coprocessors are used to segment the processor's time and capacity power into multiple sections in order to execute multiple threads parallel. But those who are the time sharing, actually time sharing is used in order to uh, run multiple threads, but those happen so quickly that we cannot realize so switching from one thread to another thread. It processor can quickly switch from one thread to another thread. This is why we cannot realize that this is switching. Let us see some example of multi-threading uh, operating programs, multi-threaded programs.
So this is actually a trading concept. Is 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 a trading concept. How to run or execute a multi-threaded program? It says it's it, actually it's really easy to make a uh, make trade. We will see in soon how to create a trade. And then we define a worker function or method. Okay, the create a thread and tell it what method to run and when it is started. When it, it will start and then run or start the thread. And as well as we will also learn uh, a thread life cycle. So once we learn those, then it will be easy uh, for you to understand. So let us. So this is this is a simple it's a Java program with uh, it's threaded okay it's threaded but it's it's near not really multi threaded you will see multi threaded as program actually it is a two programs so on the left side I'm sorry on the left side the thread demo class in the is should be the public class that contains the main thread main and the right side so the main thread it creates a thread by a thread object by calling my thread class so my thread is defined on the right side you see the my thread is defined on the right side i will go through this program okay quickly i'm going to through through this program quickly and maybe this one I'm going through this uh, program code quickly, but let me uh, have added some extra slides, which will desert from my book. So this shows the multi-threaded uh, program uh, structure, a block diagram of a multi-threaded program. So in a multi-threaded program, you will see a uh, main thread that in our, so far, the Java program we have in the main class the class that public class the class contain the main method that we are calling the main thread okay that thread can call multiple threads like thread one thread a thread a thread b thread c okay and this thread execution of your con program control can switch from one thread to another thread. We will see this switch uh, uh, in a period. Okay. So I will come to this program. Okay. So let us see first how to create a thread. Okay. So how to create it should be a thread. Okay, I can add the detail. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Do you like me to add right now or after the class? Uh, after class. So as I say, as I said yes, and then you are leaving. Yes. Sir. How about if I would say no? Yeah. Then you stay here. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Don't forget that our next exam is in next class. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So how to create a thread? A create creating a thread is, is an easy task. Okay. There are the two ways: either by extending the thread class, or by implementing the runnable interface. Okay. There is an mis there is another mistake here. It should be R U N N. R U N N. Okay, runnable interface. Either by extending the third class or by implementing the runnable interface. Okay. Hmm? Oh, okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, once we say that 
by extending the threat class. So the what is the threat? What type of class threat class is that? Is an abstract class, right? Okay, is an abstract class and runnable interface. Is an interface is 100% abstract. So mainly when we extend the threat class or we implement the runnable interface, we need to implement some methods defined in this in this class or interface. One of the method is start method or is run method. Let's see a program. So by extending the third third class is is very simple. You say that we can, for instance, we are creating a new class named my thread, and it will extend the thread abstract class. So when we extend thread abstract class, then we need to overwrite the run method. Okay, we need to override it. And then when we have, a, we have my thread class, then we can create thread easily. My thread th equal to new my thread. Okay, and then we call thread dot start. In order to start a thread, we use uh, in order to run a thread or, or thread or start a thread, we use start method, not the run method. We implement the run method, but we we use start method in order to call the run method. We will see later soon that we don't need to call run method. Or if we implement the runnable interface, then then we will write this way: my thread class my thread implements runnable. And then we have to implement at least the run method. There is a little difference between there is some difference between uh, um, using between implement uh, extending thread method or implementing runnable method. I will tell that in next class. I will explain that in next class. But you see the program description is a little bit different. If you say if I have my thread th object, then we will start directly thread th dot start method. But here we we have that extra line over here. It's a little bit different. Okay, then we'll then later we will go through uh, the thread life cycle later. Then what else? Okay, there are some methods, and maybe there is some synchronization and synchronization methods. That's not too much stuff, but So if you go to my uh, CSIT at Experts, uh, what is that, GitHub account, GitHub account, then I have this project. I have added the source code for multi-trading and parallel processing. There is a project over here. You can clone this project and you can run this code, okay? So that you don't need to, just give attention. You don't need to copy my code. Just give attention. You can get my code over here, from here. The entire course I will discuss now. Everything is here. Let's start with the first program. It says here in this slide, it says it has a class thread demo. And that uh, use my thread 
class to create my thread, a new thread, and my thread class extended the thread object. Of, uh, abstract class in order to create a thread okay we just knew that there are two ways to create a thread okay this is a way that they used to extend thread class okay so let us let me run this program so <clears throat> this is the my thread program I just copied from the slide and I just made few changes, okay. So actually, and then my thread okay. So this is the main my thread, okay. The thread demo is the uh, thread demo, and maybe my thread. What I can do, I can maybe copy my thread from here. Okay, I'm putting all together. Sorry, I did a mistake. Okay, I, I deleted the main third, main method. Okay, so let me quickly get it. So class. Class third demo, right? This one. This is class third demo. Let me make a public class. Okay. Is the third demo? Let me say main. And let me refactor the arena. Sorry, I, I by mistake I deleted the code. I have multiple programs running in this computer, multiple applications open already. So this is why it is taking time. But it should not take this much time. Okay, the slide says, let us start with the slide, right? The slide says we have a main we have a main class for instance this will be my public class public class thread demo we can put it thread demo main maybe so it's easy for to understand that this class has a, okay as main method okay I see. I messed up. I call it, this will be my thread. This is why it takes too much time. This is my thread, and this will be my thread. Okay, oh, sorry, mm -hmm. I didn't mess up. Okay, so this is my, for instance, this is my thread demo class. I just rename it as thread demo main so that it's easy for us to understand that this is this this class has main method. 
Okay. So this is this up to this is straightforward. Everybody understand that it has a main method, right? And we are creating an object. Object name is empty. Okay. And then my thread. How do I create an object? My thread empty equal to new my thread. Okay. This is the constructor I'm calling. And what method I am calling my thread dot start okay and see that I am not calling my run method okay run method is not called you don't need to call run method okay run mat method automatically is called by calling start method okay I will go through this quickly so so you see that this one so this is my run method let me cut it and as soon as I extend my thread class class I say my thread it says extend uh, thread should it's not an abstract class I want to see the source code of this thread class Maybe I have to look at this later. Okay, so in third class, so I uh, I have my run method. So what my run method is doing here? Just it has. Okay, so you see that this run method, this uh, this for loop has a little bit different signature. Either it has it has two an integer count equal to one, then row equal to one, right? It has actually two multiple variable initialization. Maybe so far the program code you have seen have only one initial variable initialization, right? Variable in initialization. But if a for loop can have multiple variable in initialization, because this part works only one time, initialization part. So it, it works only one time, so it will not be a problem. But if you uh, do not understand, it then we can do it like this way for instance count one over here then integer row equal to one same thing okay I have made it simplified okay then it says row less than 20 row plus plus count plus plus I'm incrementing both rows and uh, row and count over here right okay so it is possible for for loop this is an exceptional for loop structure, but it is okay. What I'm doing here for i equal to 0 to i less than count. So initially, at the initial loop, okay, my count will be is 1, right? My count is 1. And it says i equal to 0 to i less than 1. That means only one value, zero to zero, only zero, right? Okay. So then, how many times it will print star? So then, after that, it will go to a new line. But let me run this program and let us understand what it does. And this is actually this put a for loop, another for loop in the main thread. Actually, this is the main thread. This is the main thread, and it has created another thread. One thread. Okay. So if I run this program, actually it does not say clearly what is happening. Okay, but one thing that you you may understand or may not understand that if I run this program multiple times, I may not have same result. You see that in the previously in the previous run. I had all of my stars, stars, stars at the end. But but this time, not, notice that all I have. How is code? How is my code? You have one star, and then I have two star. I have three star. I have then two star. I have then. You see the difference? I would put is something. Just remember a few lines of this output. And if I run this program again, you see that ending line are different right so if I run this program again I will have I may should have a different output 
The main concept is that you cannot tell exactly which one will run first. Which statement will run first and then which statement will run second and then there is no sequence, straightforward sequence. Yes. 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 Third synchronization, yes. Yes. Third synchronization concept is that when multiple threads use some data values, okay, especially then, then one thread needs to release a file or some data in order to execute or start running of another thread. So that there is so it may there is a possibility that a deadlock may happen. So in order to resolve or or create a multi-threaded program that will not go in a deadlock situation, we use synchronization. So synchronization is uh, is the last topic of this slide. Maybe if I have time tonight, then I can discuss, or maybe next next class. This is why I told you that the beginning. This is a large topic. It's, it's difficult for me. I don't know how to teach it in one class. I can go through everything, but tonight I have tired a little bit, and then I, I I'm sure that I will not be able to complete it everything. Okay, so. Be patient, please. Next week we will finish. We will uh, have, or I can create a video that I can share with you. You can watch that video like a class. Then you will have. Okay. So main thing that you understand that like see, there is no state forward. State forward. You see the output. The different output is coming. Okay. So then where did I leave? So here I left for how to create a thread with thread by extending the thread class. Okay, so the by extending the thread class, I saw that we saw an example program over here. So in the slide, in this PowerPoint slide, there were only two programs. Okay, I did not understand actually that there are not enough discussion what is happening in the next program and it is not a complete program for it also. So I wanted to show my own programs. Okay, so as I mentioned that all programs are in my GitHub account, so you can get all programs. So let us go to my programs from last one. So that's First program is very simple by creating a thread, new thread by extending the thread class. And as well as I have to implement the run method. So the run method is, is, is very straightforward here. That's for I have given a for loop inside the run method. And just in the for loop, I am giving some looping looping statement, I say inside that for loop. Actually, if I give a long, 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 um, wait over here, a long loop over here, then we can see the exact actually result of a multi thread program. So it is, it's very simple, straightforward program. So I have in my run method is simple, and I have my main okay so my main class this is my main thread my main class is my main thread and my main thread has the main method okay and that is it is use it is calling my thread constructor in order to create a thread and there's the thread dot start okay so that can we call thread dot run 
Okay, then we call, call we can use, but let me see if we can run that. Okay, I have I, ha I can also call run method, but usually we call start method. You see, there is no start method, but one thing that okay that I wanted to discuss over here. Okay, so while discussing inheritance, we we saw that there are some we maybe when you do programming, you see that there are some method you see is is alive is alive then is uh, daemon or join or join after a few seconds or you see this actually this, this is run method and resume method resume method these are the method defined within thread class we will use this methods in order to execute our threads okay so this thread map is, is is very simple this program is very simple it is running but one thing that one thing that we need to uh, review that Okay, maybe I got something. You see that what is happening here? It says, uh, it says starting my thread. Okay, so this is the starting my thread, main thread. And after that, it is exit from main thread. This is exit from main thread. Okay, so then the question is that is that this after executing this line, it is executing this line. So why? How about this line? it has gone here after that okay because there is no guarantee that this thread will be started at the point you call it at the same sequence okay let us go to the next method it is almost same thing okay is is okay the it says that actually you can create multiple threads for instance in my previous uh, program i had only one class i had only uh, what is that only? in my previous program i created only one thread it's called my thread right you can create multiple threads my thread one thread two thread three okay so this is why in this program for instance I have multiple threads here, here. Thread, uh, the class A and class B. So that means then I, in my main method, I can create multiple threads. You see, this is this is the th1 is an object of thread A, and th2 is an object of thread B. So likely I can create multiple threads in my program right this program that's the step and then how do you call your thread a you use th1 that means your thread a object dot start and thread 2 dot start okay let us see uh, let us run this program and let us see if we find some interesting code here so let us see that what are in my print a print b method so in thread a we have we inside thread a right okay and it is printing maybe some for value i i value okay and maybe for give me let me give it large output and it is inside b thread b i am printing some j value okay and i am calling start thread one first and then later thread two okay but let us run this program and see whether i get all of my input 
سيريالي ولا ماي اوت بوت سيريالي يو سي ذات ماي اوت بوت از اتس ستارتنج ثريد اي رايت اتس ستارتد ثريد اي بات اي ديد نوت كومبليت ثريد اي بيكوز اتس ستارتنج ثريد اي بات اتس ستارتد ثريد اي بات انسايد اتس وين تو انسايد بيكوز اي ديد نوت كومبليت ذيس اتس ستارتد ان ذن ستارتنج ثريد بي and then it says exit from main thread and then it's showing thread a some output from thread a you see that while printing some output from thread a it is also printing some output some value from thread b you see because these values are selected randomly the previous program it was difficult for you to to remember that the sequence output sequence is not are not same right but uh, are difficult different but it's easy for you to this time see you see that it has sometimes a is putting one i1 j i3 j2 j i5 can anyone please help me quickly write few few codes or or i can do that okay I can do maybe this way. Mm. Let me let me take a let me take a copy of this. We will compare this first output to a second output. Or let me keep okay some course indicator here. And if I run it again. Let me see if I get same value. Did I get same value? So previously I had i equal to one, i equal to three, then j equal to two, j i equal to five, and this has i equal to one, j equal to two. So every time you run, yes. Oh yeah. Let's go. Yeah, quickly, sir. A B A and then this is A A B B. Hmm? No, if you run the same program, if you run same program, it didn't. But this time, did it alternate? A B A B A. No, there is no. I cannot tell you. You cannot tell that there is a. There is any step for a rule. There is no rule. <laughs> I don't know. Like Maybe you are a genius, then you could find out. <laughs> Look. Okay, we will learn that actually there is no straightforward rule, but we can have some control, right? Who said I will call fast, then who said I will go next? There is some control. So far you understand, right? So that what is we can use in a program multiple threads, but we cannot give any guarantee that we. Then we will be called fast, and which one will be called next? Okay, so I have actually other programs. So these programs are showing errors because I have same class, same class name in multiple files. So this is why it is. These are showing errors. Okay. So, but if you can fix it quickly, there is a way to quickly fix it. Like this way, give a different name of your class. Give a different class name, then this will be fixed. <coughs> so, quickly, I can fix this. Let me fix one program quickly. Okay, so this one is fixed. So for every program, for instance, this one is J5. So if you put 05, is 05, then you will get a new name of the class. B05. Okay, then A05, A05. And B zero five and B zero five. 
Okay, you can you can fix this way because this is a showing error because I have multiple same class in different programs. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Okay, let's see now. Let's see a program that implements the runnable interface class. Runnable interface. Which one is that one? Okay, this one has 15. Okay. Ah, it's global. So we put a different name, global 18. So, color 18. Let me see which class has which program has run on it. Okay, now let us see another program. So it has, okay, so it has runnable interface. Okay, we created a, this thread, thread A5. I just give a new name, new name because I have same class name in different, all many programs, okay. So then it is same, almost same, okay. So only these lines are changing and there will have some changes. So I have B also, a two threads, and you see that how to call. So this few lines, the change is a few lines. Okay. So you see I have two threads and I'm calling this threads one, thread one and thread two. And then let me see. You 
see my output is every time that this time I got one three five trade from third A and two four six but there is no guarantee that next time if I call this method I will get this again same way but it's, it's easy to see this output if I give a large Uh, okay, good that I think I just see. Okay, so go through this program and let's go to the next slide. About trade life cycle. A trade has my five states, different states. New ball state, runnable state, running state, block state, and blade state. The name key was it the name implies uh, content and it uh actually that new world state is a state that is you just create a state a state. You just easily created you have created a uh state. Okay, then you can start running of a new world set or you can stop it. If you stop a set, then, then it will be a dead set. Okay, and if you, if you start a set, then it has, it may have two or one of the two conditions. Yeah, it will be runnable or are you sure I have it here on November first? It is that's not on Tuesday, so the Thursday class you find it closed. Ah, yes. So when you start a trade, then that means it is an active trade. Okay, so then this trade, an active trade has two, another two states. Either it is called runnable or running state. This is a music but Relative methods over here. So if you understand this method, it will be easy. But let us go through this method. There are some methods. This, this are the thread controls method. Sometimes you may need to block a state in order to make, to wait, make it wait to be runnable. That is called, uh, is called 
uh, block set. What is the EL set? EL Okay, EL set is that when it, there is a runnable set, you are not running it, but you are sending it, you are resending it to the pipeline. Yes. So, for instance, if I have a QE, if I have a QE of my runnable, uh, of my set, okay? So, so some letters are coming to me, okay? If I, if I try to say, okay, somebody else, go to the next, on the way in, or somewhere in the middle, mm -hmm. that's that kind of situation, yes. Yeah. Okay. By invoking this method, the current set for its execution temporarily and allow other states to execute. The similar situation is several students come to for a day or summer, and then we tell them, okay, wait for a few minutes, come get out or something like this. Yes, yes. I worked with this one for a long time. Then I, uh, but quickly, if you look at this method, then but in your slide, we don't have this. Okay, this will not be in your test. In your slide, you don't have this, okay? Okay, third synchronization, we can discuss that in, in next class. Okay, I want to uh, maybe uh, wrap up early tonight. And then I like you, so please, okay, so please, what you do, uh, clone this project, okay? Please clone this project and do some practice. And then after the exam, we will not have any class. In next, next class, we will have our test. So maybe after the test, we will discuss about trading later, okay? So, okay, then. Does anyone has any question about the test? Learn both forward and backward. <laughs> On twin. Okay, see you in your test.